Running an online business while holding down a day job is a really difficult task. So building habits that maximize efficiency is key to sustaining the growth of your online business. In today's episode of The 40-Year-Old Business Virgin, I'm gonna share with you the one business practice that I put in place long before I officially started my business that has helped me to sustain this growth while holding down a day job. And I'm gonna share with you the template that I've used to build this business practice so that you can implement it in your business. Let's talk about how to run your weekly business meeting. Quite simply, a weekly business meeting is a time that you set aside to take account of the things that you've done for the week and the things that you hope to do moving forward. I run my weekly business meetings on Fridays in the morning for two reasons. The first reason is it's the time of day that fits within my day job schedule. And the second reason is it gives me an opportunity to reflect on the week that was and plan effectively for the week to come. And the reason I began running my weekly business meetings even before I had formed my LLC was to get into the habit of good business practice before my business started making money, which it still hasn't yet. And this idea of starting habits that are going to sustain your success was something that reminded me of how I prepared to become an academic. By the time I had finished my PhD and secured a faculty job, I was expected to do a variety of things that I had only barely practiced as a PhD student. I was expected to be an effective teacher, an effective grant writer, an effective researcher, and an effective grant administrator. So even though I didn't have a ton of experience in all of those things, I'd begun to practice writing grants, writing research papers, and teaching which really gave me a leg up to sustain my career as a faculty member. And so I wanted to bring that practice to my business to begin to take account of how I was spending my money, how I was planning projects, and how I was building the infrastructure of the business so that when it does start making money, I'll be prepared to sustain that growth and turn a profit. The other important aspect of holding a weekly business meeting is the regular opportunity it provides you to be self-reflective, self-critical, and self-complementary. There have been so many times over the past seven months that simply reading the previous week's minutes has pulled me out of a negative spiral of self-doubt. The opportunity to hold these weekly business meetings has also provided me the opportunity to keep my ambitions in check, consistently bringing me back to my planned goals and strategy. Quite simply, the weekly business meeting is the best business practice that I put into place thus far, and one that this business really can't function without. So now that you know the why, let's get into the specifics, and I'll talk about the details of how I structure this weekly business meeting. Hey folks, I just wanted to take a break and let you know that one of the best ways to get the most out of the content on this channel is to subscribe to my newsletter. Every Sunday, I give you more depth and insight into the topics I cover on Out There JCH including thoughts and perspectives that I don't really share on this platform. The newsletter is free to sign up, and as an incentive to becoming a subscriber, I'm offering a free wild food resource guide that will help make you a more capable harvester and home cook. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Okay, let's get back to the episode. So every weekly business meeting I hold has five components. A review of the previous week's business meeting minutes, what I accomplished in the previous week, what I planned to accomplish in the previous week but didn't, a detailed account on how I'm feeling. I think it's really important to capture the emotions of this process, particularly early on, so that you can learn to manage the excitement and the disappointments of doing a hard thing like running a business. And the last component of the weekly business meeting is what I plan to accomplish in the following week. There are lots of different ways to structure a weekly business meeting, but I think these five components are key to make sure that your business is going to grow sustainably and productively. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through an actual business meeting right now. And I host all of my business things on Google Drive. Here's the template that I will offer in a link in the description. And I just wanna talk about the structure of it. So I've got the business meeting title here, Out There JCH LLC, that's my business. The month, uh, the year, the start time, who's attending. 
it's always just me because uh, right now I'm a solo entrepreneur. And then I have a review of the goals and previous meeting minutes. So any changes that I want to have uh, from the previous minutes, if I mention something and it's not correct, or if something in the minutes needs to be corrected, then I will uh, list those changes here. The tasks that I accomplished, the tasks that I didn't accomplish. And then within that, uh, there's also a component of a review of the different platforms that I post content on. So I have a fiscal review where I talk about the amount of money that I've made in the affiliates program. And right now it's only the Amazon affiliates program. So I've got a table here with new sales uh, and then total sales for the month. Number of clicks based on the content that I posted and then the conversion rate. But I'd like to have you know, the clicks and conversion rate data there because I think it's helpful to just give uh, a reference point for uh, how much people are engaging with the content that I'm putting out there. Okay, the next section is data analysis. So again, this is just a way for me to keep track of how things are going. Um, so I have, I list my newsletter first. Um, and I list my newsletter because the platform that's probably going to generate the most amount of revenue for the business, at least early on. So I have my total subscribers and then the net subscribers from last week, the latest post, and I'll list the title that's there and the date that I posted it. The open rate for that particular post, the click rate for that particular newsletter post, and then overall from all the content that I posted on my newsletter, keeping track of that. And again, it's just a way to compare an individual post to how the newsletter platform itself is doing and then how many new subscribers that came in. All right. And uh, next, in terms of data analysis, I have uh, the YouTube channel. And so uh, right now I've got the 40 year old business version video series and then the regular content out there, JC. And then I like to know how many new subscribers I gain from that particular post and then how that post is doing. Now, I typically post out there JCH videos on Fridays. Um, and so for my Friday business meeting, I'm always a week behind in my posts because the post subscribers and the views that I'm going to get after posting a video, the same time I'm running this business meeting, is not going to give me very accurate data. So it's always looking back to the previous post. So I want to have at least a week exposure on the platform before I start recording data. And then average duration, how long are people watching the videos and then the click rate. Again, a, a way to measure the engagement. So then the other component is other news. Um, and so just any other things that are important to keep track of in the business. Now, this is different from the qualitative analysis, which is essentially what I mentioned uh, previously is how I'm, how I'm feeling, right? And then finally, uh, the week's tasks. And so after taking account of all of the things that I've done, I think it's really important to kind of look through all of that and then, and then set your tasks for the previous or for the upcoming week. Um, and then I have a meeting adjourn time and I, and I have this in here because I really want to make sure that I'm keeping track of the time that I'm spending doing these activities. And I try not to let my business meetings run longer than an hour simply because, you know, I can get caught up in the weeds and all of these details and writing a lot when I really need to be writing for other platforms. So it's good to be in and out and ideally half an hour for a business meeting is, is my target. So that's the structure. So now let's run through an actual business meeting. Okay. So we're back and um, let's run this business meeting. So what I do is I highlight all of, I highlight this initial template here, copy it and then paste it here. So that way I always have um, a blank template here um, that I can copy and paste and then I'll get started with the meeting. All right, so today is the 16th. Okay. So showing you all of the details of running this business meeting would push this episode to over an hour. So I'm not going to do that. What I will do is offer the full details of this business meeting to Patreon subscribers. So if you become a patron, then I will send you this behind the scenes video. And each month I will send you one video either from out there JCH content or the 40 year old business virgin content or both. So if you're considering supporting the channel, another way to do so is to become a patron. Just click the link in the description to find out more details. Your emotions are going to be guiding a lot of your behavior. 
and you don't want them to just sort of get out of control. You want to sort of unpack them, look at them, examine them, and then decide what you're going to do about it. Uh, and you can't do that if you're just keeping things in your head and you're allowing yourself to just feel all the things without, without some guidance from, you know, other parts of yourself that can help rein you in. You know, it's this delicate balance of not being too hard on yourself, having patience with yourself, and just this process. It takes years to do this stuff. And, you know, I'm always trying to remind myself that this stage of the business is about building habits. It's not so much about focusing on growth. Like you want to build habits that are going to lead to growth. You don't want to keep chasing growth. I think that that's the thing that I've run into in the early stages of, of building this business is chasing the growth. You know, I've spent this week being disappointed about, you know, my content not getting as many views and I wasn't paying attention to the fact that I wasn't actually marketing the content. But that's why we have these weekly business meetings. Okay, so it is 10.05 and I started the meeting at 9.30, so that's 35 minutes. And that's right about where I want to be. Um, so, got that done and uh, that'll do. Every Friday, I sit down with myself and give an account of the previous week and my hopes and plans for the next week. These meetings are essential for grounding me in my business strategy, making changes, and keeping track of my emotions. I cannot encourage you enough to start a practice of a weekly business meeting before you form your LLC or sole proprietorship. Start today. Okay, thanks for watching this week's episode of The 40-Year-Old Business Virgin, and I'll see you next week.